What's up guys and welcome to another video review. I hope you like the new intro. I've been trying to step up my editing game, but it's definitely been an uphill battle doing everything on an iPad. If you're new here, my name is Theo and I'm a pretty big gear geek. Today I'm going to be taking a look at a very cool flashlight called the HDS Rotary. Honestly, in my opinion, this is one of the most underrated flashlights in the custom flashlight world. I say this because I feel like the sea of custom flashlights that are available today um, it's just a new quote-unquote custom flashlight that comes out as basically a new fancy host with the same generic internals. The rotary is pretty unique in this respect because the electronics and the design have been refined to the extent of which they're unanimously HDS's own. Machining a fancy flashlight host and all is cool, but my respect definitely goes out to those who um, build their flashlights from the ground up. Now normally I'd give you guys a background spiel and all that good stuff, but I don't want to get into that too much today. The history behind HDS is exceptionally long, and there's a great thread on the CPF if you're interested in it. Today I'm going to be focusing predominantly on their flagship product, the HDS Rotary. So the first thing you're going to notice when you've got the rotary in hand is just the sheer size of it. It's roughly three and a half inches long. And for a flashlight that uses a single CR123A, the rotary is pretty large for that size. And it's easy to tell that the rotary was designed with the intention of it being a primary duty light. Um, with this size though comes the impression that the flashlight is built like a tank. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of El Zeta, but they're a company that claims to build the world's toughest lights. I've owned a few of their flashlights, and while they're definitely amongst some of the toughest out there, HDS's flashlights give a whole new meaning to the word tough. Um, I'm going to elaborate more on that later in this video, but first I want to get some of the main features of this flashlight out of the way. Firstly, the body of the flashlight is covered in a very nice knurling. I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but it is just so, so nice. Um, knurling is great for getting a, great, a tighter grip, and it can be important if the flashlight is, say, wet or you're wearing gloves. The Rotary's knurling is easily the best I've seen on a flashlight. It's smooth and even enough to where it's comfortable to hold but um, and grip, but it also it's not digging into your hands like some uh, knurling can do. And at the head of the flashlight, you've got a stainless steel bezel. Um, this is a nice touch because this is where the flashlight is most likely to land if you drop it. And stainless steel is significantly better at soaking up drops than bare aluminum is like the rest of the body of the flashlight. Um, it also makes a lot more sense if you're trying to use it as an impact weapon. The crenellations at the head are perfect in my opinion. They're not like overtly sharp, they're nice and smooth, but they also allow you to tell if the flashlight is on if you have it standing on its um, head, like so. Now I want to move to the tail of the flashlight. This is how the rotor gets its name actually. It uses a rotary dial as you can see here. You simply turn the dial clockwise for more light or turn it vice versa, counterclockwise, counterclockwise, my bad, for less light. Um, there's like 24 distinct output levels, I believe, and it really doesn't get more convenient than this. A feature I think that really enhances its practicality and use is that you can adjust the levels on the fly with one hand. Um, so sort of like so. Now you might not think that this is unique, but this is actually really uncommon amongst most selector ring lights. So yeah, definitely a very handy feature on this flashlight. And the switch that the Rotary uses is an e-switch, and it's been done right. It is well protected by a rubber tail cap, although I will say that in terms of longevity, the rubber tail cap is the one thing that I can see having to be replaced other than the battery. All right, so let's pop this guy open. So first thing you can see here is that there is a spring at the head, and there's also a spring back here. So it's pretty similar to the Boss flashlight that I reviewed earlier. Um, the over not the overrated, the HDS rotary is also um, double springed. So yeah, great for soaking up impacts and all that good stuff. And you also notice that the threads here are Acme threads. And I don't think I mentioned uh, this in my previous video, but that's the same threads that the boss uses. And they're a lot more re resistant under duress than normal threads is what I also want to note. If you guys can't tell already, the rotary was predominantly overbuilt to take a crap ton of damage. Um, the electronics in the head are also potted, which means they're sealed in an epoxy to make them more resistant to shock. If you yourself own or have owned a rotary, I don't think that there's any question that you own one of, if not the toughest flashlights on the planet. I know that a lot of people like to point out that other brands like Army Tech and Zebralight do similar things with their flashlights, but I just want to say that I've had a couple Army Tech lights and I've seen the Zebralights. And while I can't comment on the Zebralight flashlights, which do in fact seem like they're good um, value for the money, uh, my Army Tech flashlights 10 meter impact drop rating couldn't even stand up to a foot two foot drop onto my carpet, um, if that says anything. So in a moment here, I'm gonna be putting up a few clips of the abuse that HDS flashlights have seen. If you can reference me a video that shows an Army Tech flashlight or other flashlight doing likewise, I will be very surprised. The EDC 
PC executive that we just shot with the shotgun. Notice it still works just fine. And for our next test, So now I want to talk about the beam and output. My rotary is from the final group ion CPF and it supports a 4000K Nichia 219C. Um, this is a warmer color temperature. I do prefer the warmer color temperatures. And the advantage of this basically LED, LED that is, is that it is a high color rendering index LED. So it's going to render colors a lot better. This can be important in color critical applications, such as if you're a tin snob for one, like a lot of flashaholics are. But um, say you're in the medical field, it can be important in identifying colors. Um, if you're an electrician, I guess, if you have to <laughs> snip a certain wire, something to that effect. But yeah, you can see why it might be important to have an LED that renders colors better. But I do want to get something out of the way. The rotary does 200 lumens on its highest setting. I know, I know, you're probably thinking something along the lines of WTF. Something you've got to understand, though, is that lumens don't mean very much. A lot of manufacturers will exaggerate the output on their lights or said lights will come with a very quick step down. This definitely isn't the case with HDS's flashlights. Um, HDS individually calibrates each flashlight that leaves their shop to the exacting lumens specified. And my HDS keeps up just fine with a lot of my flashlights that are supposedly twice as bright. And it also doesn't come with a major step down to boot. You can run this thing for pretty much the whole op life of the battery at the highest output. And it has a very graceful step down. I will say that, say that too. HDS also has a great FAQ on their website that sort of addresses this topic specifically. But yeah, what HDS is essentially doing is akin to working smarter instead of working harder. Okay, so now looking at the beam, um, I think the best way to describe it is sort of as a do-it-all beam. It's got a nice generous hotspot, but still has a decent amount of flood. This is the ideal beam in my opinion, and you'd be surprised at just how much 200 lumens will do. Um, I use this one quite a lot biking, and I, I bought the handlebar mount for my bike and it's sort of important especially now that we've gone back in time i think or something so yeah, it's getting darker earlier now now that it's winter and yeah it's just very useful to have be able to mount this thing on my bike and also just throw it in my pocket but uh yeah let's get into some of the programming and features programming outputs is sort of pointless on this flashlight simply because you have the rotary dial you just turn it and access any output you want pretty quickly but it is worth noting that you can program in three additional uh, quick access levels. So for example, if you have the light on, if I tap it three times, oh, it's already on it, I guess. Um, okay, so yeah, this is the strobe one, I think. Not the strobe, whatever it is, beacon mode or something like that. I know that the previous firmware has had strobe and SOS, but the latest firmware has added a bunch of things. That I don't even know what it's called, honestly. But yeah, you can program up to three additional um, quick access output modes. Um, because the switch is an e-switch, you can also program what specific behaviors do. For example, you can choose whether a press and hold corresponds to um, momentary output, or if you can have um, press and hold correspond to a constant on output. And there's also a very cool button lockout feature that you can access by hitting the button three times. So, and now if I hit it again, you can see that it just blinks. So yeah, this is great if you don't want the flashlight to be turning on accidentally. And you just hit it three times again to unlock it. So yeah, there's another great feature called a locator flash that's always on. You do this by hitting it four times and it should blink every couple of seconds or so. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, this is great in the dark if you need to find the flashlight, especially because it doesn't have tritium. I know that there are tritium bezels for these flashlights that were released by, I think, Mark or something. Yeah, I think Mark did them. I can't recall exactly. Those are really cool. 
I really want to get my hands on one, but if you don't have one, the locator flash is also great. And you can customize if you want the flashlight to have standard low memory or no memory. These are just some of the main ones, and I'll be honest, you could probably get by with just the rotary dial here and never need any of the customization options. I like to finish off every video with my opinion on who this flashlight is for. So coming in at roughly $300 for the custom configurations, this isn't exactly a cheap flashlight. But if you haven't already seen what I've demonstrated in this video so far, this flashlight pretty much has everything you can ask for. There's one major limitation that I want to note, and that's the lack of a clip. Yes, there is a clip on the HDS website that you can buy direct, but it is trash. You can also buy a holster like I've done here. Um, let me see if I can. Here we go. This is my Thor Hammer custom holster. You can see that it's got my um, initials engraved into it and also very cool eagle. This thing is handmade, very cool stuff. I highly recommend um, Daniel from Thor's Hammer. He also works at HDS, by the way. Shameless shill um, for him, I guess. It's great stuff, but um, if you're like me, and you live in an urban environment, um, walking around with a holster just sticks out like a sore thumb. So yeah, I don't really use the holster all that much, although I will if we're going camping or something to that effect. Uh, but yeah, this light rolls like a mofo without the clip. I'm sorry, I don't, it's just one of the largest, one of the biggest flaws on this flashlight. Um, but yeah, anyways, that kind of leads to my conclusion. On a functional level, the rotary is perhaps the greatest flashlight out there. Um, if you want one of the most overbuilt flashlights in existence, a flashlight that can survive a freaking EMP because it can, and you can cope with the lack of a clip, then this is your flashlight. Uh, as always, I hope you guys found this review informative. You can bet that I'm going to be pushing out more videos in the future, so be sure to subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And thanks for watching. Peace out.